Good morning. This is video is about making a engraved uh, text in a block and then saving that file as an STL file to be printed. We're going to be using Solid Edge ST8 academic version and we're going to start by creating an ANSI metric assembly. This file contains our parts and also our drafts when we need them. In order to be able to work with the parts, we have to save the file as an assembly file first and then we can actually locate the parts in relation to the assembly. At this point, we're going to open up the part files. And we have to press the green square, or some green check mark, in order for the files to be activated. You'll notice that the ribbon changes because we're now in the part sketcher rather than the assembly sketcher. To create my first shape, I'm going to go to the Home tab, I'm going to choose Box, and when I do, it's going to ask me for the properties of a box. There are three white boxes surrounding my geometry. These are allowing me to type in my dimensions. The dimensions in this particular box were 20 millimeters uh, wide by 3 millimeters high and 50 millimeters long. Switching to the top view, we see that we have a nice big surface to work with, and we're going to be placing text on there. So we'll go into the sketching tool ribbon and come up with text and your name here. We can also change the fonts, uh, change the smoothness of the drawing, and even change the size of the text itself. I'm just going to take a few moments to play with, some, play with trying to put this text on the surface. And right now it's not snapping very well, so I think I exit it out of here. And then I hit F3 to lock onto a surface, at which point the text is much better. Other issue is the text is larger than what we're than the surface we have to work with. So we're going to select the text, and then it brings up a contextual sensitive ribbon that uh, we can choose ABC, and we can change the properties again. Play through a couple of different fonts. No problem, or change the text size. We want to make sure that it fits before we go on to the next step. All right, very particularly here, we're trying to make the size smaller so the text fits left to right. This particular command, we're going to be using distance between. In order to set the center of this text area uh, to align with the center of this face. So I'm dimensioning between the center of the text area and the edge of the drawing and choosing a distance of 25 millimeters, which is one half of the 50 millimeters of the whole thing. Because I haven't exited the command properly, uh, it's going to try and reuse the initial reference point. And that actually caused me problems, so I have to go back, exit out of the command, and restart it. So again, now I'm trying to use the center point on the left-hand side of your name is here, and reference it down to the bottom of the geometry. Save for good measure. Once we have the text on the plane that we want to use, we can then use a cut, and specifically a normal cutout, in order to either raise or lower the text. It seems a little tricky to figure out which direction the normal is going on in this particular file, so I'll show you one where it's going up and one where it's going down. When you do the selection for, of the text, you have to select each of the individual loops. Uh, so if you have letters like A, O, and E, where there are loops inside the, the outer loop, you need to select both of them. Press the green check mark to continue, and it will show you a red normal. That normal can be up or down. And in this case, I chose the normal I thought was going down, and it changed the geometry such that the entire surface was now raised above my box.
So I'm just going to get rid of it and try again. This time I will be selecting the other normal direction. And as you can see from the way the picture is showing here, the text has actually been dropped down into the solid material. If you check out the options for the cutout, you can actually determine the length or sorry, the depth that you're going to cut out. In my case, I had millimeter block of material. Finally, I'm going to save this as an STL file so that I can run it into a 3D printer. And in Solid Edge, it's simply a matter of saving it as the file type STL. Under the options, you can also change the tolerance that you're going to be using for your file. Thank you for watching.